Welcome to 2014 and a special welcome to Fishing Britain, a brand new exciting program here on the Field Sports Channel. It's going to cover course, sea and game fishing in all weathers. And coming up... What lurks beneath the surface this time of the year? Richard and his ROV reveal some winter revelations in Fish Britain's ROV TV. I teach my eldest an important lesson in gambling. And we put one of the field sports crew in a wetsuit. But first, I set Ant Glasgow Junior a challenge to use different smells to pick up a pike. Whoa! Did you see the state of that river there behind Howell? That was insane. Okay, Howell, ask me a question. The pike have a sweet tooth? I don't know. So today, I'm gonna go all Heston on you guys. I'm gonna go to the tackle store, I'm gonna pick up some crazy flavors, strawberry chocolate, and I'm gonna be injecting them flavors into my baits and see whether we can pick up a pike. What girl doesn't like chocolates? Okay, so I'm here at Middleton Carp and Angling Store. Steve's inside now, he's a, he's a store owner. He's in there sorting some crazy concoction out for me. Stuff that I would never normally use for pike fishing. So let's go inside and see what he's got. Okay, so I'm here sniffing some bits and pieces with Steve. Steve's the, 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 the owner of uh, Middleton Carp and Angling shop, store. Shop, store, what, what you, shop, center. And basically, you know, he's, he's gonna run me through because I'm definitely not in the know-how of all these smells because I just don't, I just don't use them. Steve, what would you say <clears throat> is the most craziest thing for me to go out there and inject into a, a pike dead bait? I'd look at something that the cart lads are using that's, that, that works on that side. Yeah. That's one of the newer baits out, the Crave. Right. It stinks of sweaty feet, in my opinion. <laughs> Two of my favourite foods, and that's pepperami and curries. Now, if you all know me, I love me spicy foods. And I've just found this one, and it's curryami. So there's a bit of both in there, curries, pepperami, and it smells really good. In fact, my guts are rumbling right now. Oh. Chocolate and curryami. So let's take these guys, get some injecting done, and see what we can catch. Chocolates or a night out for a curry. Me personally, I prefer a kebab. But I'm going to inject these in, in two different dead baits. I'm going to put one left and right, and I'm going to see which one which one works. Okay, so the setup is really simple. It's one of my favorite setups. Basically, it's a, it's a pencil float, which is, we have a, a stop, what do you call them, stop knots, or stop bead, wherever you want to call it, a stop knot. Then we've got a bead, inline bead, inline pencil float, so the inline lead, and to another bead, which protects the knot from the lead. Then, size eight swivel, a simple but strong quality snap link. So a homemade 20 inch, 49 strand, wire trace, two size six trebles, and a chocolate flavored Joey mackerel. So let's see if we can sniff a fish out. When I'm injecting baits, rather than go in the sides, I normally go up, a, up the ricker of the fish, and just maneuver it about a little bit and then just fire away and just fill its stomach and the cavity up and then what I tend to do is, is just pierce the sides with a syringe and that just oozes out these little pinholes put that treble into the root and that one down the flank pull it tight and away we go. That's gonna ooze some serious stench. Ruby Murray on the menu. Let's get this one out and see what happens. Mm. 
me personally, I, I like low fishing, I love low fishing and I love dead baiting, they're both equal. I don't have a favourite, as well as you get some dedicated lure anglers like sitting doors all winter, waiting for the, the warmer temperature to come and then go low fishing. I've had some big pike in the winter on lows, but I just have this theory that the bigger fish will lay up because of the, the, the temperatures are cold. It's just gut feeling. It's something that I found out over the years of me pike fishing. I've spent hours and hours and hours in the snow, chucking lows, jerk baits, you know, in shallows, deeps. And I've gone the next day, same conditions, tried dead baiting and pulled out two twenties. It all boils down to the weather. I mean, look at it now, it's, it's new year, it's early January and, I, and, and I'm here in a fleece, a body warmer, no thermals, a pair of pants, one pair of socks, and I'm, I'm, I'm toast. And to me, this ain't normal. Okay, I really thought that this deep hole in this dark corner would have been the perfect place to start. It's now time to bring in the baits and do a bit of leapfrogging around the lake. Okay, so we've just moved now. Uh, moved to this, another little spot where it's produced some nice fish, especially at the side of these two trees. So I've just, I've just pumped this trout full of chocolate again. Um, I'm determined to get a pike on this chocolate flavored trout. I mean, I like to fish pencil floats. I used to make them as a kid. Obviously I fish these on a swivel end. So it's still kind of in line, but through, through the end of a swivel, not through the center of the, of the pencil float. And what I do is I'll plumb the area where I'm fishing, I'll clip a trace on, plumb it, set the depth, and whatever the depth is, I'll add an extra six or seven inches on that so it's just slightly over depth but not too much. But each time you, you have to remember, you have to adjust the stop knot each time you move to different spots because everywhere is different. This, this is a, a drop off um, where it's been gouged out, it's been desilted. So just in front of us we've got, I think, there we've got 11 feet and then less than what 10 feet away we've got six feet you know so it's important to keep checking them stop knots always you know always remember that where you start off fishing just just keep checking them keep plumbing the depth and and, and keep on top of your stop knot basically and, that, and that's all it is it's 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 easier to just come down here and put alarms out um on a small lake like this i, I wouldn't i wouldn't even bother you know I mean, I like alarm action, but there's nothing better than seeing one of these pencil floats cock and then take off. So, uh, I, I personally prefer using floats. Even on, even on big monster lakes, you know, I'll fish maybe one on an alarm at, at distance and I'll have one close in on a float, just something that's visual that I can keep my eyes on. So there you go, I tried all these crazy Willy Wonka type flavours, your chocolate, your curry and pepper armour. This lake's got a lot of pike in here. I've leapfrogged the whole lake and, and basically they're, they're just not taking it. Um, so, you know, that's fishing. So, there you go Howell, no it doesn't work. But for some reason, I fancy a curry, some chocolates, maybe a beer. Well, thanks, Ant, for that dating device. I was banking on you to catch a fish. Well, this week one, we've got no fish, so I've called the A-team out. And we're down here at Gam Fruit. It's me and Yasmin. Hello. And I've set her a challenge. For every fish she catches, she gets two quid. For every fish I catch, she loses two quid. If she wins, she gets 20 quid. If I win, she does 12 hours of study. And boy, she needs to. So let's get fishing. Couple of nymphs. Right. Two nymphs. Right. Okay. Them. Them. Right. right. So one of them. Well, one of them. One of them. One of that. Two that, of them. Two of them. Right. Which one of them do you want? Right. The six flies I'm banking on today is distressed damsel, a yellow dancer. Then we've got a rubber legged daddy mix of all sorts, gel bar and then a couple of variations on apps, 
Um, and these two have sent in the post a couple of days ago, so they're not really fishy. The six I've chosen, they are Okie Dokie, Dialbach, Apps, Pink Panther Wannabe, and the Damsel. Let's get that net out of the way. See what happens when I'm tackling up in the lodge and having breakfast. That's what's coming out of the lake. Roll on the comp. Well, Andy, you just returned a gorgeous brownie. I did. I did. Okay, what's the secret? What, for big fish? Luck, mostly, with, my... <laughs> <laughs> with me. But um, no, a little black buzzer, size 14, a uh, bit of uh, UV varnish on the thorax, and some uh, grey breeders. Now, you've caught how many so far this morning? Six this morning. All of them are complaining that they haven't caught anything, so it's perseverance. Well, no, it's not perseverance, it's getting the right fly. <laughs> <laughs> How many of those black UV flies have you got? How many have I got? I've got three. Okay, okay. That's one for me and then for Yaz. Well, <laughs> thanks very much. That's all right. And all the best Great. for the rest of the day. Well, today, me and Dad are fishing in Garnfroyd. The method we are using to fish is the bung method. Basically, it's, if you can see, the orange little polystyrene ball, when it hits the water, the fly goes vertically down, so you don't have to do a hell of a lot. I call it lazy fishing. Ooh, go on, take it. You, look Oh, hello. I got one. <laughs> Ah, cheating. Unbelievable. <laughs> take it easy then. I am taking it well, easy. I'll come and net. Oh, it's like nice fish as well. Yeah. Take your time now. That's it. Good. Well done. Ready? Come <laughs> And guess what? It didn't get in the net, oh, so that means it's not two quid, darling. Sorry. Oh, that's not right. fair. What happened? Not no, nothing fair. happened. Look, why still there? Oh, unlucky. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <Yeah. laughs> One nil. <laughs> Look at that bloodworm in the corner of the mouth. <laughs> I've never been so glad to see a fish hit the net. I can't huh? Yeah. You okay? <laughs> well, you're not going to catch a fish falling asleep. Your bug is just gone. <laughs> That was the best take of the day so far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a second fish, darling. Just think of this, every fish I land means the more chance I get here to study. <laughs> Look at that. Gorgeous, Kyle. And people say that rainbows actually, the fish get lethargic in the winter. Rainbows don't, I find them quite harder in the winter. There we go. <laughs> well, two fish on this platform. To be honest with you, it's horrible out here. Crosswind, Yasmin's get freezing cold. So I think change of location, not changing too much luck, hopefully. <laughs> it's your fish dance. <laughs> it was the fish dance. <laughs> Hell, end of competition, and only mad dogs and Englishmen. 
come to think of it, I know a mad Englishman. This is Fishing Britain News. Floods have made fishing all but impossible in the last week, with many anglers retreating to still waters. A fisherman called Kevin from Sussex filmed cliffs at Hastings falling into the sea from a spot he says he regularly goes fishing. Matches have been cancelled. Flooding has also led to loss of fish from some of those still waters as they spill out into river systems. And there are some fears that salmon reds will also be washed out. Here is the Nith in Dumfriesshire. Now, do you want to support the angling trust team England Fly Fishing? It's holding an online auction that gives you the chance to bid for guided fishing with some of England's top internationals, including John Horsey, Phil Dixon and John Tyzak. This fishing will be on some of the country's premier fisheries, including Chew Valley Lakes, Bulewater, Rutland and Farmer, along with private stretches of the River Dee, Dove, Eden and other wild venues. For more information, follow the link on the screen. Canadian ice fishing guide Eric Hataja has caught record trout in his decades in the business. He's also got a record for pranking his clients. No, no. There he is, there he is, I just saw. Big, he's huge. This film by him has done huge. well on YouTube. He's huge, hard, push. There he is, you know what you got there? <laughs> you got yourself a plano. Oh. It's a tackle box. What's inside there, buddy? Who's that in? Is that a waterproof <laughs> Male fish are bolder than female fish, says scientists. An experiment by Swansea University has found that male sticklebacks exhibit bolder, riskier behaviour than females. Cockfish are more likely to boldly go on missions to find food and are more willing to take risks than henfish. And finally, a new political career has floundered even before it started, thanks in part to a fishing licence. Former US Vice President Dick Cheney's daughter Liz had been angling to become a US Senator and one of the reasons she pulled out is she bought the wrong fishing licence. She committed this sin in the state she wished to represent, Wyoming, where hunting and fishing are close to religion. Not the kind of gaff we're used to in fishing. You are now up to date with Fishing Britain News. Fishing for facts, landing the stories. Thank you, David. Feel Sports Channel covers shooting, hunting and fishing. Click here for Feel Sports Channel news. But before you do, take a deep breath and check out this week's ROV TV. Carp fishing in winter, there's one key thing, and that's obviously location. Obviously, a lot of the time, it's a lot of guesswork. You're kind of guessing where they might be, and, and you can spend a lot of time not, not really fishing for anything. So what we've done, we've come down today, we're at Bears Lake in Burton-on-Trent. It's a kind of typical, typical day to get water, uh, around about five acres in size. Nice clear water, uh, down to about 12 foot in depth. Um, you're looking, there's a decent head of carp, they go up to probably upper 20s, I think there might be one or two that are just going over 30, but they're all nice dark old fish. So we've come down today with a little bit of specialist equipment. It's an underwater remote control camera. So obviously we can go do a bit of exploring, try and find out where they're hiding up in the winter. Obviously we're in, in the middle of January here, um, freezing cold, I think we had temperatures about one, one, two degrees this morning. And I don't think it's planning on getting a lot, lot warmer throughout the day. So we'll get out in the water, have a look around and see what we can find. The first ever the lake that we decided to try was a swim called Suicide. Located on the back of the wind it felt noticeably warmer. As you can see, the overhanging snags provided the ideal sanctuary for carp and were surprised to find that there was nothing around. After a good search of the area, we found nothing of interest, apart from an old abandoned bike that had been dumped in the lake. Without the use of the ROV, you would never have known that it was down there. We then moved onto the opposite bank, right in the teeth of a biting cold wind. Not somewhere where you'd expect to find fish in these conditions, but almost instantly a pilot came to investigate the camera.
You can see a large wound along its back where it's been attacked by something. Looking at the footage, we believe that it's a grab mark from one of the large catfish that inhabit the water. The pike did back away into the safety of the snags for a short while, but did reappear within a few minutes, apparently unfazed by the presence of the ROV camera. With that, the light was fading, and it was time to call it a day. It was only upon reviewing the footage on a large screen that we noticed the old carp in the background, so the next morning I made sure I was down there for another look. We straight away found a number of decent carp and the odd tench under the same overhanging branches, just sitting mid-water. We're estimating these fish to be upper teens to low twenties, the kind of average stamp you find in this lake. This is a definite winter holding area, as only a week previously, on the initial test dive, we shot this footage from the onboard camera. Not the best quality, but you can really see how many fish were in the area, again just sitting mid-water, but surprisingly active for January, where many people believe the carp lie totally dormant. So just from that short little bit of footage there, you can see they're not always going to be where, where you expect them to be in winter. They were following the wind, real cold wind, and just held up mid-water, so it's definitely worth playing about with zigs, not necessarily all the time fishing on the bottom, so get out there, have a go, and hopefully catch a big winter car. If you're anything like us, you're going to have a million and one questions that you're going to want answering. So comment below what you think make a good video and what you want to find out. Just like Richard said, leave a comment below or post something on Field Sport Channel TV. Charlie Jacoby here. This is my weekly roundup of the best fishing on YouTube. Let's start with some old films that fishing tackle distributor Zebco has been busy uploading this week. This one shows a big carp caught in the south of France, a grande dorsale, in rather better weather than much of Europe is enjoying at the moment. And here is a best of compilation from one of the best of the fishing channels on YouTube. It's 2013 by Fishing with Rod. What do trout fishers do in the winter? Well, there's an argument they can't spend too much time tying the northern midge, as Davy McPhail's new film shows how. If they went outside right now, they would probably see this. Uploaded by Drow's Salmon Fishery, it shows what most British rivers look like at the moment. In the words of the vicar, due to the widespread flooding, we shall omit the verse about soft, refreshing rain. There are lots more like that, but I am here to show you fishing, not floods. Ultimate Dogtooth Tuna takes you to Numia in New Caledonia, where Matt and the Ultimate Fishing Team board the sport fishing dream boat The Ultimate Lady and travel 480 knots to visit an uninhabited group of atolls and reefs that are loaded with fish. Another classy fishing show can Gratis.se offers Fly vs Jerk 5 Episode 4, The Dark Side of Pike Fishing. Which method is the best, fly or jerk bait fishing? Find out here. A bit more rubbish, the latest in the Angler's Males Where to Fish series is Folly Foot near Bridgewater in Somerset, which I am happy to include because it's right next to where I grew up. This series is good because of the number of fisheries it covers. The filming is appalling. Finally, my favourite video of the week is from Bill's channel. Row out into the River Amazon, shine a torch, bang your boat, and the fish jump in. Simples. Click on the links to watch the videos, or you will find them in this film's description. If you would like to send in a video for Hooked on YouTube, ping me the link. Charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv Now it's over to our very own 007 on the 7 ball. Think James Bond. Think Point Break. Think Hollywood leading man in sun-soaked neoprene. Now, forget all that. It's me! As one of the world's leading surfers, I have an idea that I believe will revolutionise modern lure fishing. 
To show it at work, I have chosen one of the most famous waves in the world. I have also chosen to do it on the day the River Severn would burst its banks and flood dozens of Gloucestershire villages, something everybody else already seems to know. We arrived and the BBC's here. Exactly what am I up to? So we're at the Seven Boar pub just off the A48 in Gloucestershire on the first big tide of the year. Now, as a fisherman, what I want to do is cover water. And there's no better way of covering water than surfing the Seven Boar. I've got here the, the patent pending Jacoby surf fisher. Genius piece of kit for this. It's really simple to put together. You do need the right um, kind of wood though. We, we find that um, uh, this kind of old Canadian pine works very well. And of course the uh, size of the pipe is vital because it has to fit the rod. Let's put all this into practice. As I head towards the bank, it starts to dawn on me that what I am about to do might be just a teeny bit risky. There's only one other loony here. Um, it's rated as a three star, hopefully a bit more with the uh, tidal surge. So if we paddle a bit of fair way uh, down to meet the ball and then hopefully get a good way back. Like me, this is the first time Derek has done this. Happily for him, in this particular creek, he has a paddle. I try to look brave, noble and fearless as the local press gather. This is the before shot to the rather obvious after that they are hoping for their front pages. Well, a big crowd turned out today to watch, um, to watch the drownings. Um, this is the River Severn. It's got the highest, the third highest tidal range in the world after a couple on the other side of the Atlantic and uh, a 50 foot range from where it is now up there. That doesn't mean to say the 50 foot wave is going to go past. The biggest wave is only about nine feet high, but the longest anybody has surfed it is seven miles. Trouble is, with all this flooding, the water is generally higher, means the wave will be lower. So if I make it out of the pub car park, I'll be happy. I won't be happy. The wave arrives 15 minutes early and I am still gassing to the cameraman on the bank. As I get to the water's edge, I can see I have already missed it. Then I can see just how big it is. Well, this is one of the scarier moments in my fishing career. That wave is travelling at nearly 15 miles an hour and it's not until you get close to it that you find out what that much water going at that speed really looks like. Well, that wasn't quite the success we hoped it would be. <laughs> we'll get it next time. I'm coming back, I've got to do this properly. <laughs> <laughs> what a wipeout! Well, if you enjoyed this week, please subscribe here. Remember, we're here every Friday. And if you want more information, go to fieldsportschannel.tv and fill out our constant contact form. So for this week, it's bye for now, and I'll see you next time on Fishing Britain.